Uh, all right, thank y'all for bearing with me. She ain't broken. Yeah. We're back on. Really so. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. This ready. is one of our number of people. We oh, need to, um, you know, I wanted to scenario. I'm always good vibing. Everybody that's supposed to be here is here. Praise the right. Lord. Say hi to the people. Hello. <laughs> Hello, people. Hello. Oh, all right. All right, so we're going to get things started, y'all. So we have our training today is on commission talks, how to negotiate your compensation from sellers. And we have our very own Miss Jackie. Um, she's our West Office corporate agent. And then, uh, of course, Coach Mike here. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over for them to them. And y'all have the floor. Jackie! <laughs> talking about the money. Let's talk about the money. We're talking about the money. So look, um, I know you all have been seeing and on the news and going to the classes and watching the webinars and you know what? Before we even get started, Jackie, let's let's kind of gauge the room. Okay. How many people have had have had to now after August seventeenth have had to have a conversation with a prospective seller about them paying the commission to a buyer's agent, or you or, or having to brought up the NAR settlement to a seller as after, what that place of commission after August. Okay. No, but no. I nice. bring it up. You don't bring it up? Uh -huh, you got to okay. bring it up. <laughs> we got to buy it. Not like that. I'm like, okay, so what we do, and it, it's helped that my seller just purchased, mm -hmm. and their agent was paid for. Okay. So I said, okay, seller, just like you already went through your last transaction, mm -hmm. the seller paid for your buyer's agent, that's, that's, that's a good incentive to keep going. So they're okay. like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm trying to sell a house. So I said, 6%. It's like, gotcha. And I didn't have such a hard time because she already knew. She had already subscribed to? Yes. Okay. All right. Nobody? Jack, you, have, you had the, have you had that conversation with a seller? Not after August 17th, no. no. Man, y'all need to get it We need more listings. Yay. I just Claiming them now. I, I actually just had one. What was it? Friday, I, I actually just had a conversation Friday where I brought it up, but well, I've, well, I've had a couple of them after that, August 17th, but what I found the most is that they don't even know what I'm talking about. Right. Right. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, right. they don't even know. Like, they're like, well, they don't you asked you a right. no, they, they just, they haven't seen it. Like, they just, they're not aware of this whole settlement thing, so there's so then you run into the situation of okay, well, do I do I truly educate them on this, or should I just make it a non-issue and just move forward with doing a listen agreement? So it becomes one of those things. Because even when we was preparing for the transitions that NAR was making, um, I, I heard a number of uh, thought leaders in the industry say it's only going to be as big as you make it, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if you go into these conversations with customers, and I know last you had mentioned about the buyer, so whether seller or buyer. If you make it a big deal, then it's going to be a big deal. Right. But if you don't make it a big deal and just kind of, you know, gloss through it, then it, it, it shouldn't be an issue. So, yeah, I've, I've had conversations after August 17th, but most people, it's not an issue unless I kind of make it a big issue. So one of the biggest takeaways from today's training yes. is don't make it a big deal. Don't make it a big All right? deal. Just have the conversation with them. You, you know, hear out whatever objections that they may have. But for the most part, people are okay with paying for services and paying for values. And if yeah. you're able to articulate that in the conversation, you shouldn't have any issues as far as getting people to say yes. Okay. All right. Was that good? That was great. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so before we start reading the scenarios and getting individual agents in the room to role play, I hope you guys are eating lunch because you're missing a great one here. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I can't wait. Yeah. Like, once, we, once we get past this, then I'm going to be digging in. So we're going to get through it. All right. So Mr. Davis is going to be my seller today. 
Okay. So I wanted to discuss the recent North settlement and its implications for our listing. With the settlement, the way buyer's compensation structure might, it may change. And it's important to consider how this would affect our sale. Okay. We may need to be flexible in how we present the compensation to potential buyers. We are, we are your, th well, what are your thoughts on adjusting the compensation offer to ensure we attract a wide range of buyers? Well, Jackie, you know, the news said that I don't have to pay a buyer's agent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in real life, I almost say, well, what news is that? <laughs> well, unfortunately, sir, in, in this market, in order for you to move your property on a loan, it will be better for you to consider paying a buyer's compensation. If not, your home will probably sit on the market longer and become a stale listing. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you're saying I should do? I'm saying that you should do it. That's my professional advice to you. Okay, all right. Okay. I'll do it, Jackie. All righty. So Laquana and Diana, we're going to use our new... Yes, today. Uh oh, oh okay. Yeah, I get to role play it together. You get to role play. Who would like to be the seller? Who would like to be the agent? And whatever you have to offer. Oh, which one would you like? You can select whichever one you want to do. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Diana, give a hard time. So well, if she's saying the same thing, just I don't want to pay a buyer's agent. Well, yeah, just she tell her. Whatever. What, yeah, whatever. You don't know what she's gonna say, yeah. but present this, this. Present this to her. May you pass that to Laquana? And y'all share that one. I got an extra one. And then after Laquana does it, we'll we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Give me back, <laughs> Diana. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Diana. How are you doing today? I'm good. And yourself? I'm good. So, Ms. Diana, the uh, purpose of our discussion today is just to kind of go over the NR NAR settlement um, that's out there. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. Have you? A little, not, I don't know that much about it, but I have heard a little bit about it. Okay, so with this statement, let me just tell you a little bit. With this statement, um, it kind of just how buyer compensations are received and structured, right? As a, you as a seller, it's very important that I explain that process to you um, because it's going to be taken consideration on how it affects the sale, you know, of your home. Um so the way we present it, I don't know if you know, sometimes we used to put it on the MLS and things of that nature, so we cannot publicize it. And what's the MLS? MLS is a multi, um, multiple listing service. And so it allows for us as agents to showcase your property to the public okay. as a whole. And then everybody can see it. Okay. And then all of your private um, companies like Villa, Redfin, they all pull from there. Okay. So it, it just helps it spread across the... Um, internet and marketing. Um, so just to get your thoughts on adjusting the compensation offer to ensure that we attract a wide range of buyers. So right now, I believe that you were considering whether or not to use to compensate a buyer's agent? Yes. Okay, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, is it gonna make a big difference if I give a buyer's agent money or compensate them to sell my home? It would make a big difference. Um, and when you when you say that, are you more so like leaning towards, I don't want to if I don't have to, or are you just really for understanding of, okay, how does it how does it play? Well, I mean, if I don't have to, I would rather keep the money for myself instead of paying another agent um, and just paying the, the you as for selling my home. Why should I have to pay the the other agent because they are bringing a buyer to the house. Right, great feedback, thank you for that, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let me just go back and explain a little bit of that and why, right? So yes, my job is to bring you a buyer, right? And in our network of real estate agents, if it's just solely me, my job is also help to make sure that we don't miss buyers as well, right? And so while I'm still also out there, I have a wide range of agents on my team and within our brokerage that also can us out there try to sell your property as well. So my job is to make sure that one, to make sure you get the profit you want, right? From your home, sell of your home, sell in a short amount of time, right? And to get as much exposure to it, to be able to do that. So the exposure is the piece of how other agents come into play as it relates to the sale of your home. 
So the, the more people I expose it to, the faster it sell, right? And it's going to be able to incentivize a buyer to come your way because think about it, you're thinking about the other agent, but what about the buyer's ability to afford the home? Sometimes it will, that agent fee attacked onto that buyer will, out, will price them out. So we wanna take that part in consideration um, and say, hey, if you're able and willing and you're ready to purchase, we can help in that way as well so that you don't get priced out. So if you price a lot of buyers out, then the ability of them to purchase your home is gonna be affected by that. Okay, so if I was to give you 3%, can I just give the 1% to the buyer's agent? Mm -hmm. buyer's agent? That is an option. Okay. That is an option. But again, we want to make sure, now we could see how that goes. But again, that also may affect the ability of that buyer and or that agent to bring that buyer. So I just wanted to, I'm not gonna tell you no, but I'm gonna just let you know all the different things that for each individual um, option or situation we take on, what may come by it, right? So I'm not gonna tell you, you cannot do that because you absolutely can. Okay. Um, but again, it may hinder the amount of buyers that we bring to you this particular home of yours. Okay, well, thank you. You've given me a lot to think about. Um, and that was very good. That was good. That was a real tough client out of it. Like, look, you want to tell how to but that's what they do. They don't know, but they don't know, right? And I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I wasn't stalking, right? I'm not going to just tell you what you can't do. No, you have absolutely the right to say how you want to do it. So my job is really to say, hey. I'm putting all the cards out. If we go this way, I don't want you to say, well, I didn't know this was going to happen or this right. is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, okay, good. That was, that was excellent. That was excellent. I heard some language. Oh, turn, um, turn, hold on, Cam, so we can turn it up so everybody can hear me. Because I, I just feel like you're about to just give us some great games. Turn on the You want the whole lot? There we go. All right, Kim, give, give us what you got. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Brooks and Davis Real Estate Family. Can you hear me okay? Thank you. Absolutely. Kim. That was excellent. That was an excellent exchange. I heard uh, a couple, I've actually sat in on a couple of uh, groups to learn more about it. And what you communicated, uh, Laquana, was wrapped up really simply with, well, how do you want to compete? Mm. Putting that to a seller. How do you want to compete? And give them <clears throat> then a couple scenarios. Um, certainly, you know, at this point, you've already talked about what the market looks like, who, who, what else is on the market in the community. And so the, really the question becomes, how do you want to compete? And then elaborating, you know, as much or as little as needed. I like what Mike said, you know, don't overcomplicate um, what is for a lot of clients on both sides, you know, is not needed, not needed. I think buyers are kind of struggling more than anything because that's where the language has kind of pivoted to being very specific to the buyer, letting them understand you're responsible for the compensation. And here is the effort I'm going to make to, to capture that from, you know, other entities. And I always emphasize how, you know, the language, the language has changed to be more clear, but, it's saying the exact same thing. And I even thought today, because I had a conversation with someone like, I need to get the snippet of that old language and be able to just pull it up and say here, you know, because it really does say the exact same thing. We just never really expounded on it or went to it because it was no need for it. You know, it was that blanket understanding that the seller or landlord is paying that compensation. And that's what we don't want to communicate anymore. Thank you for allowing me to share. No, nah, excellent. Yeah. Excellent, Kim. And I'm going to piggyback off of something that you said is that it's pretty much saying the same thing, right? And the reason that the, the what's powerful about that statement as professionals, we have to understand what happens when you get sued, right? So the National Association of Realtors got sued. And instead of going to court, they settled. Well, as a condition of the settlement, there were some things that had to be done. So it's not just, all right, we're going to pay you this money. 
They're like, nah, we want the money and then we want these other things, right? So as a condition of the settlement, NAR came up with another way to pretty much say the same thing that we've already been saying, that we've already been saying to satisfy the other side, right? Because until the other side got, would get satisfied with, all right, this is the condition, it was done, we'll sign off on it and we can move forward, NAR had to reframe things. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> right? And Just... it, it is literally the same language because I remember mm -hmm. back in the day, one time I kind of stopped and read through it out loud with my client and I saw where it said you're responsible. You know, if 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 the seller does not pay, you're re I was like, but we we never really rely on that. Mm -hmm. But the language is definitely in there. Yeah. yeah. I want to say something real quick. It's so funny because it is the same thing because sellers mm -hmm. um they've always said why do I have to or hey can I negotiate you know out of pocket. They've always done that. It's the fact that somebody told them now they have the right yeah, yeah. to do that, right? Yeah. Just like a child. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I I know what I've been feeling and what you're saying, but now when somebody tells me I got rights, I, I behave a little bit more differently now and more voiceful, things like that. But they've always been there to, to say or discuss, you know, the negotiation of commissions when it comes to listing. Yeah, and I mean, I guess the, the irony of it all, though, is, is that, like I said, I've had multiple conversations afterwards and, you're, I mean, nobody's, I've yet to have somebody really offer any objection or any issue with paying the buyer's agent. Like I, I just haven't, yeah, and I haven't ran into, I haven't ran into, even on the buyer side, ran into any listing agents that are like, nah, the seller ain't paying. Right. right. Oh, you, Margaret ran into it? Yeah. Um, we didn't end up um, putting the offer on that house. Of course, she was like, <laughs> uh, was, it, was, it wasn't because of that. Because I told the buyer, yeah, I said, Hey, you really like it, you know, you're gonna have to pay me because the seller is, you know, they've been reading, <laughs> <laughs> right? And they've been talking to people and they don't want to pay buyer's compensation. Yeah. But I said, Hey, but we can, I'm gonna do my best to negotiate, work it into the contract some way that you don't have to pay all of it or or none of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you never know what, you know, they may be thinking you you would be responsible for it. Okay. So she was like, okay, but this is the seller. She was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Or, or give me a contract. So if she liked the house, I was just going to write in a contract. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like where it says um, sell to contribute so and so, so and so, I was gonna put the three percent there. Yeah. Um, she wasn't asking for any help. The buyer wasn't asking for any help with closing costs or anything. Mm -hmm. So I was just gonna put that there and and let it be like a starting point at least. Or maybe she would have just said, okay, yeah, we'll take it like this. So let me say something really quick to what she just said. Because yesterday I received a phone call from a listing agent that says my seller does not want that percentage to go on page ten. However, it can go into the compensation agreement between brokers. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what We're happened. On page 10, you know that option down there where you could put the seller did not want that to go in that contract right there. Like it's a Period. But you can put it on the compensation sheet between brokers where they have that. But that, that, that compensation between brokers, I thought, just related to commercial leases and rent. Oh, no, 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 no. So it relates to... The yeah, it has sales, yeah. Well, yeah. then what's that's, the that's not I'm my understanding either. And in reality, what we're talking about are conversations that we're having with seller and buyer before we even get a contract. This is our representation agreement that we're kind of making clear right. long before there is a customer or in this case, a perspective from the buyer's perspective, a perspective... Um, contract. And I think the thing that we've been given as real estate professionals is that amendment. And I don't hesitate to make that part of the conversation. Whenever there is a little, you know, hesitation or pu pushback, because most of my conversations are with um, potential buyers and not sellers, the majority of my conversations. And so, you know, whenever there's a little hesitation, I let them know that can always be renegotiated. You know, this is 
we can always go back and renegotiate. If we run into a scenario where the seller, you know, is refusing to pay or to contribute, we can't really say pay because technically that's not what the seller is doing any longer there. They can contribute. But in the event sellers not willing to contribute or not contribute the full amount, we can always, you and I can always renegotiate. We can amend our agreement. So, me, well, hold on before you go. So, you know, because I really don't want us to veer off of what the goal of today's training yeah, was. Sellers. So the goal of today, and I'm going to let you talk. The goal of today's training really was about the conversation with the seller, right? So okay. you're not that listing agent that's in the situation to where you got to tell Margaret, we not paying, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how to eliminate that. Yeah. Um, so I'll let Laquana go and then we'll make sure that we get back on track of what no, this conversation yeah, is about. It was just really about thinking back just a little bit off of um, Margaret of how sellers are explaining it to, I'm sorry, how agents are explaining it to their sellers. Because I've noticed a lot of sellers are saying or allowing their, I'm sorry, agents are allowing their sellers to not put anything on that form exactly. or leaving it open-ended. Right to say, let me see your contract first or your offer first, and then we'll come mm -hmm. back um, and tell you if they will compensate based on your offer. Yes. So on that side, as far as with you and 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 you doing your uh, seller presentation, are you like saying if they if they push back or the case may be, hey, we can maybe finalize this at a later date, depending on what the offer is, because that's how I've been seeing it different ways. I was like, so you want me to submit my offer, get my person excited, and you're not telling us whether or not you won't give up if there's a commission or not commission on this side. So in that aspect, on the seller side, that conversation there. So I know for me personally, again, I haven't gotten anybody to give feedback on the 6%. Like, I'm just I'm just going with, if they ask, and say, well, how much, how much is the commission now? 6%. And then would you like to sign here? <laughs> like, it's, like it's but the end of it. So. Six percent, but there's another box to say how that six percent six percent is it's, divided, yeah. right? Yeah. So if they say I want to say no there right now, I want to say no to that right now. But for right? most people, they for most most people, when I'm explaining that section of the contract, they just want to make sure it's not three percent on top of the six percent. Right. So once I come back and say, well, it's six percent, and once they accept the six percent. For the most part, they don't care how to, as long as, oh, so if another agent is coming, I'm paying the three plus the six. No, 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 no. It's just six or six regardless. I'm going to split the, the three with them. And I mean, the six with them. And they're like, oh, okay. So, that, I mean, I'm when I say it really hasn't, and I, I at least 10 conversations with prospective sellers, like it is not an issue as long as, because again, people are, people are okay with paying for what they deem as valuable. So if you've done a good job of your seller's presentation, then by the time you get to the conversation about compensation, they should feel like they're not paying you enough is what they should feel like. Right. Now, if they don't feel that way, then you haven't done a good job of really showcasing the level of value of what you're bringing to the table to help them achieve their goal. I agree okay, so then the question is, how would you handle if they don't want to do a contribution or compensation? To the buyer's agent? Right, on, for, on paper. So they're open to it, but they don't want to put it in writing during your your agreement. Probably. Hold that thought. We're going to get there. Oh, I've been a second. No, it, I think it's right. a question. You want to role play? <laughs> no. You want to role play? <laughs> but the first one was explaining the settlement impact. Thank you, Laquana and Diana. The Hi. second one is addressing seller concerns. Okay. I know you're concerned about the cost associated well, with no, selling here. Let me be, you be the seller. And I'm I know, I was just reading. I'm, they was going to do it. <laughs> I like that interaction. Do it first and then we oh, well, okay. Let me, right, let me put so, my hat on. Here we go. Hello, Miss Jackie. How are you doing? I'm okay, Mr. Davis. How are you? I'm doing well. So I know you're concerned about costs associated with selling your home, especially regarding compensation. The recent NAR settlement could mean we need to rethink how we present our buyer compensations to remain competitive. It might be worth discussing a more favorable a more favorable compensation structure to incentivize buyers. How do you feel about this approach? Um, what do you mean by incentivize? Incentivize. Absolutely. So um, the way that the NAR settlement is laid out mm -hmm. right now, um, a buyer would be responsible for paying their agent's commission to assist them. Uh, and if you think about all the different costs that are associated with purchasing a home, 
that could be pretty substantial. So what I'm saying is to put us in the best position competitive wise, why don't we offer that as an incentive once we put the house on the market to where um, we cover their buyers? That sounds good, but we need to go all the way back to this NAR settlement. What's okay. that, sir? NAR? Yeah. Okay. It's real simple. Okay. All right. So it's an it's a trade association. Um, they got sued for it really it was about misunderstanding. We had to clear some things up in the verbiage that we were using. So NAR took care of that and that's pretty much the gist of it. We just got we just have to be more clear in our communication as far as our documentation. Okay, so I'm going to trust you as my agent. So what do you propose I do about uh, this approach to incentivize well, buyers? Incentivize, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it is somewhat common as far as uh, listing agents paying for the buyer's agent's assistance and helping sell the property. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, this, you know, we don't necessarily need to get too complicated. Let's just stick with 3%, which is what most people are familiar with. So we're offering them 3% in the event that they assist in us getting the house sold. Okay, deal. <laughs> Good job. Good job. All right. All right. Who wants to who wants to go next? I just want to add that was really good to highlight that the other agent is assisting with getting the house sold. That was a good one. Cooperating, Kim. <laughs> Cooperating agents. That's what they call us, right? And just so I don't forget this, before we allow someone else to role play it, when some notice how Jackie asked me about the NAR settlement, right? Mm -hmm. Now I could have got in the weeds with her. Yeah. Don't get in the don't weeds. Go there. Okay. Do not Keep go in simple. the weeds. Keep it simple. Keep Look, it simple. they got sued. We had to come to terms just because we need to kind of clarify, clarify some things as related on paper. We took care of it, and now we're moving forward. Like, don't get in the weeds with them. Because if you get in the, the weeds with them, you can put yourself in a position to where once they get confused, then they don't, they don't take any kind of action. At the end of the day, remember, yeah. you're in front of them because you want them to take action, which is to hire you. So you don't want to put them in a position where they get confused and they freeze up. So. And if you're scared, you go in. If you're not confident, yeah. then it's going to create that doubt or fear yeah and or even if you don't know what nar mean if if i ask you that as a professional you should be able to rattle it off most right. people go uh mm, let me google it you know no i hope not jack i hope they know what in there <laughs> we won't we won't say who that was but okay they, i hope they know what hey it yeah i hope that's the association of real yes i hope all my, I hope but all team, my you to really think about it <laughs> I, hope, I hope all my licensed professionals when i first heard it i thought it was the good I see. oh nra Okay, so who who who's gonna who's gonna role I'll play? A legend. Okay, oh. you gonna be the seller? Yeah. Hey, be hold on. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Alasia. With the NAR settlement influencing buyer compensations, we have a unique. No, 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 no. Scenario I'm two. I'm not three. Ooh. We oh. took my scenario two. No, no, sorry. That's okay, Morgan. <laughs> Hi, Alasia. <Hi. laughs> I know you're concerned about costs associated with selling your home especially regarding agent compensation. The recent NAR settlement could mean we need to rethink how we present our buyer compensations to remain competitive. It might be worth discussing more favorable compensation structures to incentivize the buyers. How do you feel about this approach? Well, I'm not really sure what value do buyers agents bring to where they need to be incentivized. Okay, I am glad to ask that. So us as realtors, we are a part of this association. And because I'm a part of this association, it opens me up to a network of different people and different agents. So they're helping, well, they're, help with, they're helping and assisting me into marketing your property. So at the end of the day, it's about marketing and getting more eyes on your property. Now, the more, you know, incentives we put out there, the more people say it's like putting a big bright light above your house saying, hey, Elasia's where is that? She has the next property. Oh, she has all these things that's coming with the house, but she's oh, also paying for my agent. So it, it just gives them some more um, to come by and buy your property. So, and I, I applaud my other agents for that, for that assistance because we are all working together. So it's not just me pushing the sale of your house. You have like other thousands of agents in the city of Houston also pushing the sale of your house. And 
I, I think they should be compensated for that. And we'll also go over your net sheet so we'll know what your bottom line is and make sure we don't get below that. Okay, that was my main concern was to make sure that I am hitting my numbers before yes. I offer any incentives to any other agent. Yes, you, I'm making sure, and you can, you know, you can bet your bottom dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making sure you're beating that number. Okay. Before any other agents come in, we're going to make sure all of your numbers are met. And whatever incentive they may need, we're going to make sure all of your numbers are met first. Okay. Well, I trust Margaret as my agent, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward, and I'll let you know if anything that would sit right with me. Okay, yes, no doubt. Remember, you know, we're going to be staying in, communi in communication, so whatever I know, you're going to know. Okay. Sounds so let's ride. So look, this is what y'all gonna learn about Margaret, right? So y'all be looking at Margaret in the background, but whenever she, whenever she get a stage, then bright lights come. I'm just telling her all the time. I say, man, when it's go time, you like a different person. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, the top post mask. Oh, so, so, so. Yeah, look, this is your opportunity. To, there it is. Yeah. Y'all like, want to learn these techniques? Yeah, toast masters is excellent for realtors. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Toast masters. So it's a, a speaking club. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the do your pre I was a past president. I'm a treasurer now, but you can do your little presentations in front of the group, and they can give you feedback. So it's it's real good to okay. to get you know your your jitters. And, right, and you too. Can present like Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, are there any questions online regarding addressing the seller's concerns or feedback or feedback? Wish. Or just feedback in general? Anybody online want to, you know, speak to the first couple of scenarios that we talked about? First, the one explaining the impact of the settlement, and then the other one addressing a seller's concerns that they may have. Hey, well, let's move yeah, on. But that means we're doing an excellent job. Well, we got no yeah, questions. Just, uh, Margaret is just talking about uh, making sure the numbers are right. Mm -hmm. Right? And, I, and you maybe you said it. Did you say that seller's net sheet? Yeah, she did. Oh, okay. And how often did you, would you say you would present that? Just per offer? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I would know already what their, what, since we'll know what the bottom line is for them, whatever they offer, I'll probably just say, okay, yeah, she's in her net. Okay, so we're good. So it'll just be basic, like, hey, you ready to get this sold? Mm -hmm. Or if they're not at the net, then I'll, I'll probably have a, a conversation with the, the buyer's agent. Say, uh, uh, homie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we can't uh, do this. Can you, can you put that? Can we, like, first of all, I would tell them, hey, now we're going to get, we're going to get the deal done. Because sometimes the other agent can be defensive. Yeah. So just say, hey, it's all right. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. We're going to put our heads together. We're going to work it out. So this is the number where we need to be at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's see how we're going to finagle all of this other stuff to get your, your buyer to where they need to be mm -hmm. and to where our seller needs to be. Win-win. Win? Win-win. Like a win-win. A win-win. Oh, win-win. Yeah. Not win, win Margaret, but a win-win. <laughs> a win-win. That, that means great job, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to number three. Highlighting competitive edge. With the North Settlement influencing buyers' compensations, we have a unique opportunity to stand out. By offering a competitive compensation to buyers' agent, we can attract more interest and potentially drive up our sales price. Would you be open to discussing a strategy that maximizes our visibility in this new landscape, sir? So I'm I'm confused, Jackie. Like, how yeah. do we how do we offer more visibility by paying more? How does that work, Jackie? If I'm gonna, if you as a seller is gonna pay buyers compensation, that means more buy more agents to bring more buyers to this particular property, which means you're gonna have more eyes on this particular property. So is it? But but if all of the sellers are paying compensation, then would not just be the same like all the other sellers? Not necessarily. Because your house is in a different location. You could have a pool in the back. You could have a larger backyard. You could have different things about your home that favor, that's more favorable than the neighbor's home. But it, but it doesn't have, so how, is it possible for me to just, I mean, if, if my house has all those better features, is it possible for me to just 
you know, obviously somebody will buy my house over somebody else's house, whether I'm paying for the commission or not. You always Otherwise, have that option, but as a, one of your giving you advice, sir, I will tell you it may sit on the market a little longer. So I would really love if you would come back to terms and let's discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just playing with you. Let's water <laughs> with <you. laughs> But anyway, I was out to dream. <laughs> if I was comfortable with them, then yes. You know, I'm comfortable with role play with Mr. Davis. But with all of that being said, how will you guys handle it differently, online or in person? Well, again, we're discussing the competitive edge of the so, well, I mean, When he asked the question about um, that his house has more things or he has, he has a pool and his house might be better, I would probably come back and say, well, people are different. Somebody might not want to have a pool in their in their um backyard because they don't want to have to deal with cleaning and, and all of the extra money that you have to pay for having a pool. So the value of your house is not your value on your house is not the same as somebody else. So okay. I wanted to understand your question, Mr. Seller. Your question was what again, please? So my question was, if I had better features in my home anyway, why, why, in so many words, why does it matter if I pay a buyer's agent or not? The better features of my home will get my house should sell themselves. Okay. The home should well, sell itself, Kim. In, in the real estate market, generally, we're comparing apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Mm -hmm. So someone who's looking for the features that you're offering they're not only looking at your home. And again, it's easy to have this conversation when you've already established for the prospective seller what the existing market is. What what Who are they competing with? And so in terms of um, more eyes on your home, you want to put yourself in the most competitive uh, position. If there are three, four homes, if you, if you have the only home, that was this shiny red apple, you would have an argument. But if there's more than one, if there's even one more, I would encourage you to be as competitive as you can be for that one buyer or family who may be looking for exactly what you're offering. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a great way to frame it, Kim. Like just take it from a standpoint of, well, you know, in the event, if yours was the only option, that could be a strategy that works for us. But like I showed you before, like there are other properties that are comparable to yours. And, you know, if those properties are paying a buyer's commission, then that doesn't make you as competitive. I think that's a great way to uh, frame it, Kim. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to take a stab in the room, Laquana, Margaret? Well, Laquana. No, is that, is that come to get in? I think, I think oh, Shay got to go. Oh, you nice as now, Shay. Uh -oh. Oh, you got to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, Margaret going to go. Margaret, Margaret, uh-uh. No, uh-uh, you're going to be the agent. Margaret going to be the seller. Margaret going to go. Oh, he, he breaking you, know, you in, right? You know Margaret going to go easy on you. You know she is. Yes. See, look at her. I don't know. Trust that smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So which one are we doing? Scenario three. three? Well, number three. All right. Hi, Margaret. So as you know, with the NAR settlement influence and buyer compensations, we have a unique opportunity to stand out. By offering a competitive com compensation to buyer's agents, we can attract more interest and potentially drive up our sales price. Mm -hmm. Would you be open to discussing a strategy that maximizes your visibility in, new in this new landscape? Yes. Now, you've been talking to me for a while. When you said drive up the sales price. Yeah, I know. I see yeah. your ears <laughs> perk up when I said that. So, yeah. <laughs> How can we do that? Right. Uh, so pretty much, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. You got to go from there. 
I don't know. That's you what get to educate. I know I was going to go there too. But I knew she wasn't going to know the answer, but I knew. But you can help her. Uh, uh, drive up the sales price, like maybe add the commission onto the sales price. No, no, no. no. So I mean, it, 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 make it a, 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 a bid more. Make it a bid right. more, so to speak, to bring up the sales price of that home is what I'm gathering from yeah. that scenario. Okay. But how would I see? This is putting it a little lower. Oh, it's okay. The license for so it's okay. okay. The dynamic, the dynamic, the dynamic, as it relates to this context, uh -huh. works. If say you got three or four houses, and of those three or four houses, only one of them is paying the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. okay. So now, out of those three or four houses, only one of them is paying the buyer's agent. Then that means all the buyers are going to go for this particular nice. house, mm -hmm. and then because then they'll start bidding against each other, and then that's going to drive the house up because mm -hmm. they get their buyer's agent. And she'll be at war. So that's uh, now as it relates to our experience in our market, we know that. Everybody's paying the buyer's agent. I was but gonna say, it's like, it's like, did this not happen before the NAR settlement or something? Like, oh, a high bid, yeah. No, well, no, no. I mean, not like, because of the compensation. Well, the other thing that they're doing, some people may do 2%, some people may do 2.5, you may do 3. If you're doing 3, you're still beating out the competitive edge. Yeah, you still have the great, competitive edge. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Yeah. Because now I am seeing that, like some of them saying, well, we're not going to do, we're not going to do a zero commission, but we're only going to do like 2.5. Bro, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> so as like a listing agent, you and you're getting multiple offers. How do you juggle all the different agents that are like bidding against each other, basically? Well, yeah, you better get you a sales things. spreadsheet. I did. I got twenty two yeah. offers. Put them all in there. Oh, yeah. like Gave the seller the pros and cons of each. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you would use the net sheet, and then mm -hmm. you use like the net sheet to determine. Which is a better offer? Because right. at the end of the day, that's all a seller care about. Like, right. how much money I'm walking away. With. No, I'm right. saying like when communicating with the other agents. Uh -huh. Like, hey, so, uh, like I'm sitting on three offers and they're all within my net sheet. Like, I could really go with any of them, but then I get another. It's like, what feedback do you give buyers agents to where it's like compete? You know, like how high is the best? Yeah, yeah. getting your highest. Oh, oh by this uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the, so the niche has the best like, by giving a deadline, and there you go. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah, we use an app. Penn Title has an app that we mm -hmm. use to formulate our niche. Yeah, so you lean on your resources, and it's on hard too. It's on hard, oh, guys. HAR has one. Yeah, I like the yeah, HAR does have a form. I like the hard, they have a form, it's written, but I mean, that's so antiquated. As a part of the set of presentation, digital, they have the okay. I do. Yeah. Every time I do I a, a presentation, I just said, next, next, next. I you, Jay. Hey, let's make this money. Okay. So with that being said, oh, I'm sorry. Any questions online? Kim? Feedback. feedback? I'm sorry. I will start using the word feedback. Got it. Let's... Any feedback online? Comments. Or comments or questions? Ask a question. Are right. we doing great? Let's keep it moving. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. So offering transparency. I wanted to bring up to speak. Nope, <laughs> we are all in one. Hi. Hi, Jackie. Hi, sir. I want to bring you to I want to bring you up to speed on the NAR settlement and how it affects our listing. Transparency and compensation structures may become more critical, and we might want to openly discuss our compensation offer and listings. This could enhance trust with buyers and their agents. What do you think about being more transparent in our approach? Um, what would that look like, sir? Well, now I can't put compensation on the MLS. Okay. So, right. And I, I want to be upfront with you 100% because if you go on to the, the HAR and you see the list, you're not going to see any kind of compensation. Um, but there are other alternatives. So we can have a flyer, like the flyers that we put in the flyer box, we can have compensation on those. Okay. Uh, on When I have it posted on our website, I can have compensation showing that. When I post it on our social media, I can have compensation. And I think that's good because um, when the agents are aware and the, and the agent's clients are aware that that's one less expense that they're going to have, then it is going to make our property more attractive. Um, so by you offering all of those different scenarios and doing the flyers, et cetera, are you going to do all those things for my home? Of course. Why would not? 
have to think of it. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We're going to... <laughs> I want to say something from an agent perspective. I have to catch myself. Okay. Um, so offering transparency, who would like to take that on? Different we people. Got, we ain't got many options. I know. Okay. okay. I can be the agent. Oh, you got to be the agent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Who's going to be the seller? Yourself? We got one more. She okay. tough, like, she tough. Now, remember? No, <laughs> but for the challenge. Okay. Diane. Mm -hmm. Hi, Diane. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. I wanted to bring you up to speed on the NAR settlement and how it affects our listing. So transparency and compensation structures may become more critical. We might want to openly discuss our compensation offering offer in our listing. Um, this can enhance trust with the buyers and their agents. What do you think about me being more transparent in our approach? Well, do you think that if we if we um, advertise that I'm giving a compensation, if that's going to help, or I um, mean, what do you think is best? Absolutely, I think advertising to buyers agents that we are offering compensation would just put a competitive edge on our listing and attract more eyes and buyers to our property. So in any creative way that I can, I would market that for you and just get the word out to any and all agents to bring as many buyers to your property to get it sold as fast as possible. Okay, so what ways can we do that? Well, we could do um, marketing flyers, online marketing as well, even just touching my sphere of buyers agents to bring them to bring your listing and property aware to them, you know, just to keep it top of mind. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'm open to that. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> good job. I love it. I love it. All right. So the next seller is gonna come from Zoom. So y'all be talks amongst yourselves on who gonna be the seller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what feedback what feedback do we have about that as far as it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, but I, okay, so the biggest takeaway though is right, you got to make it known that you cannot put it on the MLS cuz you don't want the seller to be like and you said we were going to be transparent as far as the commission, but when I went and I saw it on HAR it's not showing that you're paying a commission. Right, so you got to be upfront with saying, "Hey, according to the settlement, and you know, we're not able to showcase that on the actual MLS multiple listing system itself. So I don't want you to be shocked if you go on there and don't see compensation. But we're going to place it on these other places. And can you have like a sign and like like I saw a property that had like three percent sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you you can have everything that. except MLS. MLS. Okay. And you've got to be careful because we talk about the flyer. So don't put it on the flyer and then upload it to the MLS. Right, you can't do that. You, okay. That's $500 fine. Ooh. Yeah. And then there's also the form that you have to, the seller has to sign stating that they're willing for you to advertise that. Because if I'm not mistaken, they can they can agree, like, like they're going to do seller's concessions and how much they're going to do. I want to say that's a part of that new listing agent. Now. Right, but they don't have- Listing to, agreement. They don't have to advertise that. Right. So there's- Yeah, the they board. can opt out on that. Mm -hmm. They can opt out on that. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, you make it a big deal, they gonna make it a right. big deal. Right, I don't make right. it a big deal. So that's me. I skip all of it. Sometimes. You know, the reality, <laughs> you know, and the, look, the, as, as we get into these conversations, I want you all to buy into the fact that it's in their best interest. Right. 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 So if you walk in there, bought into it's in your best interest to do this. It's in your best interest to pay a buyer's agent. It's in your best interest to market that to the buyer's agent. It's in the it's in your best interest. If you come from that place, then it's going to be easy with you to deal with the objections. Because at the end of the day, you're wanting you like you're you're sincere about wanting to put them in the best position. So now it's just a matter of how do I best articulate it? Like how do I best yeah. explain it? Right. But the place I'm coming from is is that this is in your best interest to do this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any feedback online? Okay, well, here's our last and final scenario. And I'm going to read this, and this is open to all to participate. Um, as we navigate the effects of the North Settlement, it's 
crucial to prepare for potential negotiations around buyer's compensation. Buyers may be more selective if compensation offers aren't attractive. I suggest we discuss our options so we can position your listing favorably in the current market. How does that sound to you? And to me, my question to the agents is, what would that look like? What would it look like? What would it look like to, um, you know, to position the property favorably in the current market, even though we've touched on some things? But in this one, they're talking, in essence, it sounds like the agent is saying, when it comes to the negotiation, mm -hmm. that's going to be a part of it, right? So like Margaret talked mm -hmm. about her situation where she was going to submit the offer. But they get to tell us that. I want to know what they're going to do. It's a, this can be open in a lot of suggestive ways around negotiations. Yeah, but you were asking specifically about position the listing favorably in the current market. Yes. How was you listed favorably in the current market, Mr. Davis? <laughs> well, I think this is more talking about negotiations. Okay, how would you list it favorably in the in the market, sir? I would put it on. I would I would advertise it on all available challenge channels, and make the marketplace aware that we are paying buyers' compensation. But that still hasn't addressed the negotiation. Exactly. Thank you. Because I'm like this question is kind of double minded or. Too, but he might so, went right where I wanted him to go. Thank you. So we're going to <laughs> Are we going to talk about the negotiation, Jay? We can, but but the, the title didn't have anything to do with the scenario. But I thank you. Okay. So now that we've made aware of that, Jay, can we talk about how would yeah, let's talk how about would you handle it if the seller brings up me paying the buyer's agent is not putting me in the best negotiating position? No, not at all. How would you how would you address that from the seller? I'm gonna say, oh, seller, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it. So, the buyer, you know, they have some hurdles to make your house the most attractive. We want to make them have as less hurdles as possible to purchasing your home. So, we want this home to be it for them. Now, you assisting them with that that buyer's agent compensation that's a hurdle that they don't have to jump. So they move closer to purchasing. And everybody else that, you know, aren't, aren't offering that, their houses are further away. So we want your house to be first. But why should I agree to pay the buyer's agent? I'm going to end up making less money. Why, should, why, oh. why would I agree to that? Okay, so we've already established what your, your bottom line is. So let's let's go on back to the bottom line. You wanted to get to Cancun quicker, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Actually, yeah, you're purchasing that home, man. <laughs> Are you paying for that so they can get it now? You're going to be in Cancun and everybody else is going to be up here in Texas stressing, trying to get their home sold because they did not offer buyer's agent compensation. So we got you ahead of the game. It's, it's, it's in your court now. You want to go to Cancun? I mean, I, you can send me a postcard and I'll be happy, but I know you want to be in a place. So <laughs> go ahead and, you know, just go ahead and and I know you're gonna do the do the thing that's that's right for you and your family, which is you being in Cancun. So that's you just signing on the dotted line <laughs> and and go ahead and paying for their agents. That's just one less hurdle. And you know you're gonna have a good family in a home that and that you helped take that hurdle away from them. I actually talk um, figures, direct figures with them. I don't even play around with it. I mean, if I'm, I'm looking at your net sheet and I know how much you, you're you offering over here, compensation, yes or no. And if you're still going to get 198000 here, you might as well offer that over no, there. But I can make more money. And your house will sit longer and the money will be in your pocket less time. Good. So that that's, I think, the way that Margaret approached it as well as you. Like, you got to you gotta go away from the number. Don't go away from the number. Like, like go away oh. from the number. Like, go to their reason for it. Well, the reason yeah, for why yeah, they go away from the here. number. Yeah, all right. Oh, oh you, you're trying to sell, you're trying to save six thousand. Yeah. But you but said you, you wanted to, you said you wanted to get to Cancun. Like how long how long are we wanting to wait? You said you wanted for the six thousand. Yeah, you're saying you, you gotta or it's contingent like, on you need this new build over here with an X yes. amount of days where you're not gonna get it yeah. if we keep so haggling like over. Why. Yeah, yeah. So you, you gotta you gotta pivot them because if you go back to them. 
try to articulate why they should just pay the money. I'm like, no, I don't. If I ain't got to pay extra money, why I'm would not I pay going extra money? Yeah, like. But you're gonna lose that new build over there that you didn't put that ten k yeah. down so, on. So the pivot, the pivot is key. The why. Well, good job, Mark. The why. Now the only the only feedback that I give you, Margaret, is, Margaret is you know once they're sold, be quiet. Okay. Right. Once you yeah. once oh, you yeah, give them go. Tell them how to get to Cancun, yeah, what's like to change, you know, what to pack. <laughs> yeah. There you go. yeah, once you once you hit them with the, you said you wanted to get to Cancun. <laughs> that's it. No, like, no, hey, no, they don't hear anything like Yeah, like, I think so I want to get there. Okay, well, come on, let's go ahead and get here sooner than later so we can get, get this sign in the yard. Let's get this sign in the yard and I go ahead and start working towards getting it on the market so we can get you there sooner. You see what I'm saying? And boom, that's it. I ain't got to say nothing else. Um, all right. Any feedback yeah. from online? Everything sounds good. Am I the only one online? It looks no, like you're just the only one talking. <laughs> Tim, but we we can see that fabulous voice. Hey, look, I don't know. I don't know how shyness works in real estate, bro. Like, I, yeah, it don't work for me. It don't work. I'm here. <laughs> I, I, I'm work. Give us some feedback, AK. Oh, uh, Margaret did a great job. I, I like the way she did that. Um, I think earlier you did something that was pretty cool, or you said something about uh, they go they pay anyway. You know what I mean? Like we, we big deal it for no reason, so they're gonna pay anyway. The market, the buyers always kind of dictate the market. If we can't afford it, then nobody's buying it. Then the price goes. Something gonna have to change, right? So. That's good, dude. So, AK, since the settlement agreement, had you had to, have you had to have conversations with any sellers about this, the NAR settlement and the compensation? Have you had to have any of those conversations? Uh, yeah, I, I've had them, but uh, for the most part, I guess right now my buyers they really ain't caring about it. They never really have, and for some reason, all my buyers always seem to go to that line out of that whole uh, contract. They go to that one line and say. What you mean if I don't have to pay? I mean, if they they won't pay, I have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. All my buyers seem to be attracted by that line. So I I, I haven't had to have it in too much detail. I got you. And like you say, the market, when I do call around, everybody's still paying anyway. So right. what's your response, AK, when they ask you that? About what? What you mean? If you don't get it from the seller, I'll have to pay it. Oh, um, I, I just before the settlement, before I had re any real excuse, I just usually pretty much tell them it, it's nothing to worry about. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. most 99 percent of the time, 99.9 .9 percent of the time they're paying anyway. And we'll cross that hurdle when we get to it. So, AK, on that point one, that's not going to pay you. What are we going to do? Uh, we're going to take you to court. <laughs> <laughs> AK going to be like, well, you can't buy this. <laughs> you can't buy it. You can't. No, I, I wouldn't say that. But but ultimately, we, we just have to uh, handle it properly. You know what I mean? So I don't think it would be sad to say that people are not allowing people to go see homes because of this. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't want to be that guy either. Anyway, so I'll probably help them out and, and beg for a Christmas gift or something. Yeah. Well, I think, <laughs> where, I think where people are really going to get into trouble is you didn't have the conversation with the buyer to even see if they would pay it. And you just did not show the property. Like that's where the problems are coming to. Yeah. Right. And it's like, well, I didn't even know that there was anything about me possibly paying your commission. And you didn't show me these properties. Like a buyer is going to feel some kind of way about it. So the reality is, is that you, you got to have the conversations with the buyer. Like you got to, you can't go into these buyer consultations and not talk about commission and then when they sign the whatever agreement with you, or if you, because it's, it's some of y'all still out there ain't signing agreements with them, when they you when you do your search on HAR and you do run across that house that's not paying compensation and you don't send it to that buyer, and then they y'all keep moving, they pick a house and then some other way they find out about it. Now, like, hey, why you ain't show me this one, man? This one's really 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 nice house. What happened here? Why you ain't do it? And it come to light. That you ain't show it to them because you weren't gonna get paid, and you ain't talk to them about the commission. It's gonna be it's gonna be an issue. Mm -hmm. So don't put yourself in that situation because you're scared to talk to to talk to people about the conversation. Go ahead, Rick. I just sat through a uh, HAR training. You know the ones they have online. Mm -hmm. They spoke to that very point. Just mm -hmm. to double down on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's a fair housing issue, mm -hmm. and uh, it swings. The door swings both ways. 
So if we represent a seller and we feel like they don't want to offer X to this agent for whatever reason, be a violation. And as representing the buyer, to Mike's point, if we don't show them a house, even though we could be on a, some, they're not paying compensation, it could be spun to, you don't want me to live in that neighborhood because of whatever reason, religion, ethnicity, uh, race. So to Mike, even if you don't want to just be honest, A, <laughs> do it because it could be a fair housing thing that could affect our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great point, Rick. Okay. All right. Any any other feedback? All right. So I want to. All right. So I want to offer. All right. So I want to offer to you guys a couple of things. Um, number one, um, at Brooks and Davis, we're really gonna really really emphasize you all participating in the coaching, right? Because um, number the, the biggest thing about participating in the coaching is it successful people, that's what they do. They have coaches. So if you're going to be successful and you're going to reach your potential, you need to do what successful people do and take advantage of it, right? Um, the second thing about the coaching is how else are you going to work on your craft? When else are you going to spend time speaking with you know, someone that has over a thousand transactions that's been doing it for 20 years that, you know, has all of these interactions and engagements with, with agents that's really tapped into the marketplace and that's built a business, you know, when else or how else are you going to engage with a, a person at that level to help you move your business to the next level? Like that's just not something that can just haphazardly happen over a quick five minute phone call. There needs to be some intentional time. So, you know, if you're a commission split agent, obviously, the one-on-one -on -one coaching is, is, is encouraged. Meet once a week, you have that option. But even for my transaction fee plan agents, every two weeks, you all can participate in the, participate in the group coaching. So, um, you know, the, my, my thought process is, is that you got three options, right? The first option is that keep on not coming to coaching. And you can you can keep on, you laughing, Jay. <laughs> you can, and you can keep on getting the results that you're looking for. Right. Or take advantage of the group coaching. Now we only meet every other week when it comes to the group coaching or take advantage of the one on one coaching where you meet every week and increase the amount of time that it's going to take for you to get to wherever you're trying to get to in this journey of real estate. All right. Um, I'd like that, to add something. Go ahead, Kim. Simply iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Very simple and powerful concept. And secondly, I think we can all agree when we do intentionally come together like this, we're able to leverage each other's real time experiences. Absolutely. You know, like we're only talking to so many prospects and customers and clients in a week or a month. But when we come together, we multiply that. Now we're actually vicariously having that experience through through our uh, counterparts and our peers. So thank you, Mike, for making it a big part of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. And it is extremely valuable. Thank you, Kim. Yes, yes. We are absolutely committed to the coaching and how we do the coaching. So uh, real simple, if you want to schedule your one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you don't, you should all have the link tree. It has the link on there for you to schedule the one-on-ones. And then again, if you're in the group meet and you have your notifications on, then you're going to get notified every day when we when the weeks that we do the group coaching, every day you're going to get that reminder right before the group coaching goes on. And um, and again, it's every every other week as it relates to the group coaching, every day that week. All right, all right. And then the second thing is, so there's a book that I just finished reading. It's called it's called Exactly What to Say. That's the title of the book. Exactly What to Say. It's by Phil, Phil P-H-I-L-M Jones. All right. It's a it's a little book, but it's a very powerful book. And they have, he has verbiage in there that he uses. So as we kind of went through these different scenarios, uh, it's about peach, uh, speech patterns. 
And uh, for instance, uh, we in some of the in many of the op objections, it's going to be a question, right? The seller's going to be like, "Well, why do I have to do this? Or, or why do I have to do that? Or, or I don't, or I don't want to do this because you know, or it's going to come in that vein." So he has a very po a powerful reframe that just says, "What makes you say that?" Whatever the objection is, right? Like I, I made that. I said, "It's yeah, that's exactly right there." I said, "Well, how how is it in my best interest, or how is it in my best negotiating position if I'm paying a buyer's agent?" Remember, I said that. Mm -hmm. So you come back and say, "Hmm, well, what makes you say that?" And what it does is it allows you to put them in a position to where they have to are they have to now explain why they're saying it. And one of the things that he mentions in the book is that in any negotiation, the person that's in the power position is the person asking the question, not having to answer the question. Mm -hmm. So you always want to put yourself back into the power position to where you're asking questions. Another powerful reframe is the whole just curious, right? So if somebody says, I need to think about it, we get that all the time, right? I need to think about it. So you say, okay, all right, Mr. Sell, I understand. Um, just curious. What exactly do you need to think about? And it makes you not sound like an asshole, right? Because, you know, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that, that you need to think about? So that's just a couple of them. So I encourage you to get the book, right? And kind of what I did was I read it, man, and I, I start pulling the stuff out, and I start re-looking at my scripts for role play, and I start re remodeling them, reframing them. Uh, it's another one. If you're finna introduce something to somebody, like, okay, so the whole commission piece, mm -hmm. right? So if you present it this way, all right, Mr. Seller, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is going to work for you or not. Right. And, and the reason he said it started that way is because when a person says, I don't know if it's going to work for you or not, you automatically start paying attention. Are you going to listen? Because you want to see. Well, I mean, is it? Is yeah. it going to work for me? I don't know. So you got the attention, right? So it's about the attention. I don't know if it's going to work for you or not. Um, but would you be open-minded to? Would you be open-minded to paying a buyer's agent three percent? Right? Now, the whole open-minded to is, is that most individuals feel like they're open-minded. So now if I say no, I'm going contrary to my natural inclination of who I am thinking, <laughs> believing that I'm an open-minded person. So it, it enhances your chances of getting a yes because they want to they want to line up with how they see themselves. I see myself as open-minded. So for me to, uh, for me to uh, represent that, then I, I I need to pay three percent. You just wrote the scenario questions today based on those theories. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, seriously. If you're gonna, what you just said makes so much sense. If you're gonna reword it and start it this way to make somebody think about what you asked right. them, then our whole scenario should have been on that today. Well, Jackie. <laughs> I That's just right. thought it. Hey, Jackie, I just thought about it. Oh, well done. So guess what? If y'all when y'all come to coaching, <laughs> we can go into more detail. Now they have two of the exactly what to say. One is for real estate agents and one is for oh. so oh. the one I read was just the regular one. I didn't, I didn't even know they had one for yeah. real estate agents. So look at that. It's by the same. I know I walked in madly. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess up the floor enough. Couple of things. Uh that class that I told you I took with the HAR people online, one of the things that they did say is fair game, is if we have a listing, you can have signage advertising how much you're willing to pay. Good deal. So anyway, yeah, accept that's because anywhere but except MLS. So if you want to have a 10-foot sign in your house that say I'm paying three, yeah. That's fair re reason I bring that up <laughs> is because signage is signage. And it's looking like a silent salesperson with a QR code. All that means gonna yeah. stage the house for free right, so furniture. That's yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's the yeah. point. And secondly, and this is just something to what Mike is saying as far as how to present the commission piece. Um, my newest listing, please, I invite everybody to check it out. It's from Katie. It's my, one of my personal properties. Now, with it, with it being my money and me selling it, I can look at what's going on from a real perspective. So now, if somebody was asking, what do I have to pay a buyer's agent for? If it were me, feel free to use this or not use it. I'll let them know. You were never responsible for paying the buyer's agent. Anybody who told you you were, you'll never pay a buyer's agent working with me. Mm -hmm. The only person you're paying is Rick Day. Right. The money that you pay me in this commission, what I'm doing with it is I'm going out to market your property to the most knowledgeable realtors, 
and the most qualified buyer. That's all you got to worry about. Your bottom line, we've already worked out. Right. You're going to get this regardless. This money that you're paying me, we've already worked out. I'm getting paid regardless. Don't even worry about nobody else because that's not your concern or your responsibility. Right. If I got to spend this whole 6% to get your house sold for your number, that's my business, not yours. Right. So now, the only reason I can, I can come to this realization on how to sell it to somebody else is because I'm selling for me. Right. Right. So that's why I just wanted to share that in front of everybody. Because until you're selling your own house, you may not know how to sell it to somebody else in a way that makes sense for them. Yeah. Because they not paying the buyer's agent. Right. We are. Right. And the only reason we in this nonsense, me and Margaret have talked about this before, is because people never were telling that whole truth. Right. They never was paying the buyer's agent, but these jokers don't lie to sell their value. <laughs> so they go in there tap dancing and lose. No, me and Mark have been talking about this since it broke yes. off. Yes. So it's like, it's just crazy. But yes. so if y'all want to take somebody to see my listing, feel free. You ain't got to have no super key or nothing. So you pay me. me. I got a programmable door. So if you super duper new and you ain't even pay a super key fee, you can still go take your people to see it. <laughs> and on the picture counter will be a big sign and glass to say 3%, right? Oh, we'll yeah, know absolutely. That there yeah. you go. They have to make sure make a sign. There you go. <laughs> Put it in the front yard. What do you want to tell about the event? Close set. I thought I was talking to you, but I got a mouth. You me. said, "All right, you said, you said you was gonna do it." Your place. Come on, Jack. Hi guys, I'm back. Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna end this nice training today on inviting you guys out this afternoon from four to seven to our podcast, our Realtors podcast. Again, oh, it's, it's for podcast. you. It's a, podcast. it's a panel. I call it a podcast. Okay, I stand it's to be corrected. Be yeah, it's going to be online. I stand. I stand. It's gonna be on I stand. Hey, be I might. I might. I might. Radio. I might. Show? No. I might. Really. I have the person here to do it. <laughs> we might. <laughs> he know all the ways to go to YouTube. They'll just bring <laughs> so the tonight's panel of Realtors top producers it's for you to learn what you need to do and to take the next step in your business and where you need to go. So I'm encouraging each of you to come out tonight to find out what nuggets you can get to increase your business. It's like a coaching session on steroids. On steroids. All, all these gyms, these people that didn't operate at a high level and, and, they're, and all of them have committed to, being, to giving you all the game. So they're not going to hold back on anything. So if you and we are not recording it. So and it's in a relaxed environment. <laughs> it's in a relaxed environment, food and drinks. Yeah. Bring your questions of what you have that can enhance yeah. your business. So, so you have a notepad. And a notepad. Absolutely. So you this is not this is not one of those ones that you want to be uh negligent about and appre and you know cavalier about. You need to are uh, apprehensive. Yeah, you should come to this one, right? Mm -hmm. Um and then I'm gonna I'm, Oh, gas NRL. What I I know y'all know where it is. It's We've been Augusta. blasting y'all with right. the, the flyers and the, Pex. <laughs> the Texas, the groupies. So we know y'all know where it is. And if and if by chance you don't, then text me and I'll tell you where it is. All right. Uh also I'm gonna have some flyers for the real estate summit, right? Uh it's gonna be happening October 12th. So now these next two to three weeks, you have everything that you need to start a real estate conversation with as many people as possible. Go out there and invite people to the summit. That's a great way to, to find out if somebody's in the marketplace. Hey, just want to check in with you. Uh, we're having a real estate summit coming up uh, for first-time home buyers and first-time investors, right? So that's been the spiel that I've been given. First-time home buyers, first-time investors, right? And for the most part, I did it yesterday. I did what I'm telling you yesterday. Hey, we have a real estate summit coming up. It's for first-time home buyers and first-time investors. Just wanted to let you know about it. And I got four leads yesterday just having that conversation with multiple people. All right. So I know it works. We have, we're gonna have flyers. I'm gonna bring some flyers with me to the to the mixer. We always have some up here at the office. So uh take advantage of the opportunity that you have. Like I said, four. I got four leads yesterday from just having that conversation. All right. Okay. That's it. We finna eat. Oh, I'm finna eat. <laughs> we'll see y'all. We'll see y'all tonight. Oh, this, this Thank afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank y'all for joining. Y'all have a good one. Me too.
And yes, yep. I am a human and I have some questions. Unfortunately, yet. my grandson yeah, has a no. football game. Oh. So. Thursday. Yeah, freshman yeah. high school. Uh, that Thursday's gonna be rough because you got to go to school today. Uh, senior. Oh, okay. That's why I don't want to go to school. That's why I lose and don't want to go to school. Either way, it's a problem. 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 Either way, it's a 